So we have a GM 5L40 transmission in a 2006 BMW. This car has 177,000 miles on it and we just gave it a road test after doing some engine work. The transmission was shifting fairly normally at low speeds but when you got into it it would hold the gear too long and not want to upshift. So I've gone ahead and dropped the transmission pan and the fluid was really, really dirty. So I've got two glass beakers with oil in it. The one on the left is the oil that came out of the transmission. The one on the right is what the oil should look like. I have to say that there were no codes when we scanned the transmission, so as far as the computer is concerned, everything is working. But what I suspect is going on is we have a lot of debris in the valve body. BMW recommends that this transmission not be serviced and by the looks of this one it doesn't look like it has although the fluids and the filters are readily available and it's not that hard to do. So to remove the valve body the first thing I've got to do is disconnect all of my electrical connections. So to disconnect them I'm just going to carefully use my screwdriver to hold the clip up and pull them out. We want to tr be as careful as we can to try not to break them, although they're going to be fairly brittle for being in oil for so long. and I'm just going to let my wiring harness hang over to the side. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the bolts that hold the valve body to the transmission. So these bolts are going to be up the front here, we have one, two, three, four. And up the back we're going to have uh, the same, there's going to be four bolts in the back, one, two, three, and four. So I've got all the bolts out of my valve body bar one right here in the center. I've also loosened up the one bolt that secures the spring for the selector just because it was putting a lot of spring pressure on the valve body. I'm going to hold that valve body and then I'm going to use an air ratchet to undo the last one mainly because I had so much oil on my fingers I was unable to twist the bolt out with my fingers so I'm just going to use a ratchet to do that. Okay, and I'm just going to lower the body down into my pan and let it drain for a little bit. So with the valve body off the transmission, I'm going to go ahead and start to disassemble it. I've got some clean plastic tubs that I'm going to put each section into. We have across the back here, these are accumulators. Uh, these are what soften the shift, so there's going to be a piston with a spring inside there. On the bottom side we're going to have two different valve bodies. We're going to have a front valve body and we're going to have a rear valve body. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull all of the bolts out. There will also be some check balls and gaskets and a separator plate in here. So we need to make sure that we don't lose anything. That's why I'm keeping it in this plastic tub as I do my disassembly. I'm going to pull my accumulators first two while they are still assembled onto the entire valve body just to make it easier to hold it. So I've just gone ahead and cracked all of the bolts. These are on the top that hold our valve body on, as well as our accumulators. There's more bolts on the other side, but I'm going to go ahead and take our accumulators off first. And we're going to have a piston 
that might be a little bit stuck in there just because it's got oil pressure and then we're going to have our spring these springs have a tendency to break so we want to make sure that we inspect them on all of them right now we're just going to keep the spring together and I'll get the piston out of there shortly. So I'm just gonna move this into another clean bucket so I can keep my workspace clean. So with the piston removed, you can see that we have two O-rings, one at the top, one at the bottom. We'll be changing these O-rings and then we just want to inspect the bores, but we'll clean everything up first and have a good look over everything before we make any decisions. So I'm going to go ahead and take out these last bolts and then I'll flip it over and take off each individual valve body. I've got all my bolts out on this side, so I'm just going to turn the valve body over. We're going to have some fluid coming out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and remove our last securing bolts here and separate each valve body. So each valve body is clear. I'm just going to go ahead and lift straight up. And now I'm going to take the rear off. Okay, I wanted to be able to see these filter screens here. These are screens that are inside the valve body to filter out any particulate. So I wanted to check and make sure that they're clear. And our separator plate, we can see we have a lot of debris in the lines here. This is our gasket. And then these are all of our check bolts throughout the valve body. These will block off passageways and restrict oil flow in certain directions. So we want to make sure that we clean this area out extremely well and then make sure that we get these check balls all back in the correct space. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump all of my check balls. Now I have a map of where all of these balls go. If you don't have a map or you don't have access to the repair information for this, you can take a picture with your phone and then that way you can see where all of the balls are. Because cleanliness is one of the most important things when doing a transmission valve body, we don't want to use any shop towels, paper towels, anything that can leave lint behind. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this up and I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to let the balls drop into my container along with the spring. And I want to make sure I've, I've got them all out. I'm also going to separate the two parts of this valve body. There's a back portion to it, so I'm just going to go ahead and break that seal. Slowly bring it up. This is going to be the second half of this separator part. So we want to look and be able to clean all of these passageways. We also have another gasket here that we want to be able to change. So I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can pull this off. And now this is ready to go over into the parts washer and get cleaned up. And we've got to make sure we scrape the last parts of our remaining gasket that didn't all peel off. You've got to be careful when we clean this surface that we don't gouge it or use any kind of mechanical cleaning. So we just have this in our solvent tank because we don't want to use any paper towels or sharp towels. And we're just going to basically use a brush and scrub everything clean. And then I'm going to rinse it with hot water and dry it with compressed air. I 
want to make sure I get any debris or buildup of that bad fluid out of these passageways. I don't want to have any residue in here once we're done. I'm going to do the upper part of this valve passageway. I'm just going to scrub all of my connections, all of my passageways out, make sure everything's nice and clean. We're ready to rinse and air dry. Then we'll do an inspection to make sure we've got everything. We've got some residue of gasket that we need to remove from the other part of the valve body. We'll uh, just clean, do our final cleans and do our final inspections, then put this off to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the valve body. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the two solenoids in the body. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my small pick. I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure on the back side because it may be under some spring force. And there is a little clip right here in the valve body. And we want to go ahead and pull that clip out. then we're going to remove the solenoid. Now on the solenoid there's a screen on each solenoid so I want to be able to clean these and there's also going to be some o-rings here as well. I'm going to go do the same with this one. Sometimes getting underneath these clips can be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, this one was under some spring tension, so I didn't have my finger on the back of it. Same thing, we've got a little tiny screen here and we're going to have two O-rings. So I want to go ahead and pull the valving out. And you want to take note of which direction the valves go back in. When we clean all of this up, we're going to clean it up a section at a time. So I'm going to keep these valves here in line with the way that they came out. I'm going to put this solenoid over here just so I know where it goes. And then the ones that don't have solenoids on, you can see here on this one we've got a spring and then we have this metal uh, pin here. That's what's actually retaining this valve assembly. There's a valve behind here. So to remove these, what I'm going to do is grab a pair of long nose pliers. I'll take, put my screwdriver in and hold some of that spring force back and then I'll pull that pin out and I'll let the valve assembly come out. So what we're going to need to do there is I'm going to try and take some of that spring pressure off by using my screwdriver to hold the spring back and then this metal tab is going to push down like so and come out the bottom. Now there could be quite a bit of spring pressure on this so you want to be careful when you go ahead and remove that. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock that spring up just so it doesn't go flying across the room. Okay, so I'm going to let my spring come out. So I'm going to start, I'm going to lay these out so I have my metal locking tab, my spring, and then I want to tap my piston out. I want to make sure that I keep it in the direction that it came out. 
So I'm going to slide the valve into the spring like so. I'm going to go ahead and take these other two out and lay them out, then we'll wash up the valve body and then we'll wash up and inspect our valve separately. So once again to remove it, I'm going to press this over. There is once again a spring that we want to control. So you always want to be aware of things that are under spring pressure. So I'm going to hold that down with my screwdriver. I've got my tab and then I'm going to let my spring come out. And I'm going to bring my valve out like so, keeping it in the direction that it came out. We don't want to put it back in backwards. Most of these valves will go in the wrong direction, which will create a problem when you go to drive. So I'm going to do the same again with this one. Just going to move the retainer back. There's the retainer. I'm going to take my spring. and bring my valve out. So now that we have everything out of this valve body, no, not quite. We have a small piston down in this one that was stuck in there. When you put your screwdriver down into these bores to help anything out, you've got to be careful that you don't scratch anything. So you want to be very careful while you're doing that. Okay, so there's my shuttle valve that came out. So I want to keep that in the order, even though it looks like a symmetrical valve, and that was sitting up against that valve. So now I've got the actual valve body clean, I'm going to go ahead and clean my valves. The way I like to clean them is I use an evaporative solvent, a multi-purpose solvent, and I'm just going to take that solvent and in the same bucket so it keeps everything retained, it's going to pick up each valve and I'm just going to clean it off using my solvent. You don't really want to use anything that has acetone in it just because it'll take any kind of paint coatings off of anything. But a multi-purpose solvent like this will work just fine. You just hose each part off, keeping them in their respective orders. When it comes to the valves, I want to make sure that I clean the screens. So I'm going to concentrate a little bit of time and making sure I flush out any debris that is on the filter screens. Same here, I'm going to make sure I flush out this screen, make sure I get any debris or build up of gunk that could restrict it off of it. So with everything cleaned up and ready to do a final inspection, I'm just going to take a flashlight and when I look at my valve body, I want to be shining it down the bore and making sure that everything is nice and clean, there's no debris anywhere, there's no signs of scoring, and everything looks like it's ready to reassemble. The same with my pistons, I want to take a flashlight, I want to get up nice and close to each piston, and just verify that there's no scoring or no signs of damage on each piston. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the mechanical components back into the valve body first. But before we go and put in our valves, we want to lubricate each valve with the same fluid that the transmission is going to operate with. So I'm just going to take our first piston. I'm just going to pick it up, make sure final look over. I've got my spring in. I'm just going to take my piston dip it in oil and when I put it in I want to make sure that it slides in without any restrictions it should move freely and float and then when I drop it in it should drop all the way to the bottom of the ball by itself to lock it into place I'm going to take the locking tab bring it in from the back and then I'm going to take my screwdriver and just depress the spring Sometimes I find it's easier if I come in on the side to pull it down. If I push the locking tab all the way in and bring the spring up, it'll hold it in place. Then I'm going to do the same for our next one. 
So we have our shuttle valve first. So I'm just going to dip each end of this. And this should drop in and pretty much go all the way to the bottom of the bore by itself. Once you get it aligned, there should be no real resistance and it should just basically fall down and seat all the way down, which it has. Same with our main valve. I'm going to do a final inspection. And once again, it drops in should be seated. Bring our locking tab in from the back. Then I'm just going to go ahead and depress the spring. We go and install the last mechanical valve on the other side. I'm just going to turn this around to make it easier for me to do it. Just going to once again do a final inspection of the valve, make sure there's no debris or scoring dip it into our transmission fluid. And the valve should drop in. This one has a much stronger spring, so it's going to be a little bit harder to get this one in. I might have to bring it down in stages. So I'm just going to kind of bring it down as far as I can and put my lock in. And then I'm going to try and compress my spring further with my screwdriver. So on this spring, there's a lot of spring pressure. So what I had to do to be able to get everything installed was I used a quarter drive socket that would fit into the bore and I pushed it down to a point where I could get my small screwdriver in against the valve body to lock it. Then I installed the locking tab. So all I've got left to do now is install my two valves. This one which is going to install here, this is controls our torque converter lockup valve and this valve is going to be our system pressure valve. We need to go ahead and replace the o-rings and then we'll lubricate these as well and install these with the clip and then we'll be finished with this valve body. So I'm going to install the shuttle valve for our torque converter lockup. I'm just dipping it in some transmission fluid again. I've got my spring already installed on the pocket and because I've got the spring has to sit in this valve, I'm holding the valve body up so I can install it. Otherwise, the spring can fall out and then the valve may or may not go all the way in until it's seated. So I have our second valve body. We're going to go through the same process with this one. So the first one I'm going to pull out is going to be the selector valve. This is just going to slide on out and I'm going to sit that one to the side. Then I'm going to start with our shift solenoids. These are for our gear shifts. So I'm going to pull out B first just because it's blocking A. Then I will go ahead and pull the valving out first before I start on the other solenoids. So we've got a little shuttle valve. We're going to have the main valve and the spring. Same with our shift solenoid A. We have the same process. Okay, so the shift valve for shift solenoid A is retained by a little metal plate here so I'll come back and I'll pull that one out later and let's pull out solenoid C Make sure our 
spring comes out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out the valving associated with the shift solenoid A. There is a spring down here that I can see, so I'm just going to gently pull up on the tab just enough to see if I can release the spring without sending it flying across the shaft. Then I'm going to take my screwdriver and put some pressure on that spring. There's the tab. So I'm going to line that up. So we have our spring that came out. Piston. Then I'm going to do the same for our valving on the other side. Just going to remove them just like we did in the other valve body. So I'm going to direct these out. I'm going to take my screwdriver, hold the spring down. Remove the tab. That piston is sticking. So the valve is moving. There might be a small burr that's stopping it from coming out. We've got one last one to remove, which is going to be this plug where there's a valve underneath. This one's going to have a hook on the back of it. We've got a spring. And piston. Okay, so I want to make sure that that's orientated correctly. We've still got our one where the valve is stuck. So I'm just so I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to wash up the valve body so I can see it better. Right now there's a lot of oil on there and I'll see what's stopping this one from coming out and make sure I remove it. So I've got my valve body all cleaned up. Uh, the piston that was stuck I gave it a little shot of air and it popped right out. I've used my flashlight and I've come down and inspected all of the bores to make sure there's no scoring or signs of wear on both both sides and so this part is ready for reassemble so we're going to go and clean up all of our valves just in the same way we did with the other valve body i'm going to use some parts cleaning solvent that's got a high evaporative rate and as i clean these i'm just going to transfer them to a clean bucket so i don't get dirty oil all over my clean valve body so i'm just going to one valve at a time come on through, hose everything down. Once again, no shop towels, no lint. We don't want anything that can contaminate the valve body. And then I'm just going to inspect the valve for wear. That looks good. Place it in my next tub. Go ahead and clean the retainer. And then I'm just going to continue on down the line. With our shift solenoids, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I clean all of the screens. 
any we don't want any debris in there that can influence how it's going to shift and before we install these we'll go ahead and check the resistance on them and change the o-rings out This one had a lot of debris in it, and you see it coming up as I'm cleaning it. So I'm ready to reassemble my valves back into my valve body. So what I'm going to do is make sure that first before we install them, I'm going to lubricate them in the same oil that the transmission is going to run. And I want to make sure that they, they should drop in fairly nice. You need to line them up, but they should drop all the way to the bottom without any restriction. This one's got a spring, then a plug. Make sure it snaps into place. We're going to have one last look over our valves, make sure that there's no signs of wear, any kind of scuffing that's going to cause it to hang up. Go ahead and drop that in. So I'm just going to drop our spring in. Then I'm going to use my screwdriver to compress the spring while I bring in our locking key from the back. and make sure it comes all the way in and seats and the last valve once again quick inspection make sure there's no visible wear or damage and we're going to lubricate Again, compress the spring. We want to make sure that when the spring compresses that it stays relatively straight. So that's why I'm coming in on the back side and kind of pulling it down to make my lock tab come in. So we've got our three valves in here. We can go ahead and lubricate our shift valve. This is the primary valve, so when we move the gear selector in the vehicle, this is what we're actually moving. Go ahead and slide that in, make sure it moves freely. Now on this side we're gonna this valve is gonna drop in quite a ways and then we've got our retainer and our spring so we'll have to come work down through the hole here to compress it. So my first step once again is lubricate and we want to drop that in and it may take a little bit just to line it up in the ball and make sure it slides all the way down. Then we want to make sure we get in on the right locking position. So that's going to be right into this groove right here. We've got to make sure that the lock tab goes all the way into the groove on the other side to secure that piston. Okay.
Now with these ones I'm going to twist the valve body to the side slightly. Actually I want to give that one a little bit more of a clean. It's still got a little bit of dirt in there. Because the spring is dropping in, if I just try and drop the, the spring in like that, it's going to fall out and it may not slide into the valve. So what I'm going to do is, after I lubricate the valve, I am just going to turn the valve body on its side so the spring will stay in place. Then I can slide it in with my finger. Take the little shuttle valve. and slide that in, make sure that it moves freely and that the spring is compressing. I'm just going to take our valve and just put it in temporarily just to hold it. We still want to change the o-rings on this so I'm just using it there to stop the valve coming out and I can also look through this groove right here and make sure that the spring is seated properly. And I'm just going to do the same with the last valve. Now I can push these down and feel that they're moving freely. I want to make sure that the valve is moving up and down. So I'm just going to install a shift solenoid just to stop it from coming out for right now. And that's it. The second valve body has been cleaned. All the valves are back in. We still need to change our O-rings on our shift solenoid and we still need to do our resistance checks on the solenoid. We've got to clean our gasket off of our separator plate. We're going to be installing some new filters here. You could, if you wanted to, clean these out. They are a mesh filter, so we could use our multi-purpose cleaner. But I'm going to be stripping all of the gasket off. I'll probably wash it first just so I don't get covered in oil, and the solvent in the solvent tank will help soften that up. So to clean these up, I want to go ahead and pull my pistons out. There is a couple of O-rings on them. I'm just using some inside pliers to carefully pull them out. We'll be going ahead and replacing these seals. One of the symptoms of a failure in the accumulator, if these springs are broken, is you will have a hard shift. These are here to cushion the, the gear engagement. So I'm just going to go ahead and work all of those out. There will be a lot more oil in each one. and we'll wash all these parts up and inspect them for any signs of wear once we're all done. So I'm going to go ahead and test our shift solenoids right now. I'm hooked up to my 12 volt power supply and I'm just set around 13 volts. So I'm going to click on the positive onto one of the terminals down inside. Doesn't matter which one. And then I'm going to take my ground terminal and I'm going to energize it and you should be able to hear the solenoid and feel it moving backwards and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and change our O-rings now. I've tested all three solenoids, everything's working well. To get the old O-rings off I'm using a hook tool and I'm just going to come underneath the O-ring and I'm just going to walk it around until it pops right off and then the same for the front one. So now I've got the O-rings off, I'm just going to use some of my general purpose evaporative cleaner and clean off where the O-rings sat. To install the new O-rings, I'm going to start with the back O-ring first. I'm just going to drop it over and I'm going to go ahead and use my hook tool again just to make it easier to install and walk it around and sit it in the groove. You want to make sure that when the O-rings go in that they don't twist or bind up so they need to be in their relaxed state. And then I'm going to install the front, just like that. 
So I have all of the O-rings changed out on our solenoids and now to install them I'm just going to dip the solenoid in our transmission fluid that's going to lubricate the o-rings and then I'm going to push it into the bore and you should feel go in slowly I'm just going to give it a little twist and you'll feel it kind of lock in once it's in I'm going to take our clip our retaining clip and it's just going to slide in and that should snap into place. Okay, I'm just going to put the next one in. You just want to push it in, feel it in. You don't want to force it. If you feel like it's forcing or using excessive amount of pressure, then you want to stop. And then we're just going to go ahead and press our clipping. And then these are free to rotate, so we don't have to worry about where the electrical plug is pointing right now. We'll deal with that once it's back up onto the transmission. Then I'm just going to install the last one, same manner. Lubricate my O-rings. Work that in. So I'm going to go ahead and test our pressure control solenoid as well. Same manner as the shift solenoid. I've got my power supply set to 13 volts. I'm on one pin of the solenoid. And I'm just going to activate the solenoid. You'll hear it move. And you'll also feel it going back and forth. Next I'm going to remove the old O-rings. And this one I can see is really flattened out on this surface right here. So I'm just going to wind that up. And then I'm going to take the back one off in the same fashion. Once I've got my O-rings off, I'm going to wash the solenoid one last time with uh, my evaporative cleaner. Remember you can't use any sharp towels, anything that has a lint. If we restrict this screen in any way, then it's going to create a problem when it all goes back into the car. So now my solenoid is all cleaned up and all the grooves are cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and install my new O-rings. I'm going to start with my back O-ring first, same manner as the shift solenoids. Then I'm just going to use my hook tool, which is going to help me to wind that O-ring around and into place. Next I'm going to do the front. Once you've got your O-rings on, when you're sizing an O-ring, because uh, we bought a gasket kit to do this job, even though we didn't pull the whole transmission down, you want to make sure when you get when you choose the o-ring because a lot come in the kit that you have a protrusion above the solenoid so usually what I'll do is I'll try and match them up size wise on the bench but then I'll just take a straight edge on my tool and lay it across and you can see that there's an air gap when I'm touching the solenoid to the solenoid body that allows room for the o-ring to compress when it's installed Lastly, I'm just going to test a TCC solenoid, make sure it's cycling and not sticking, which it is, and then we'll go ahead and change the O-rings. And then I'm going to install our new O-rings on again. Okay, to install the solenoid, I'm going to dip it in our transmission fluid again. And then on our valve body, it's going to install it same fashion as the shift solenoids. Rotate it in till it snaps into place, and put our locking clip in. When I install the pressure control module, the pressure control module has a locating pin right here. That locating pin has to fit into the valve body right here. So I'm going to do the same thing, lubricate. But this time I want to make sure that I line that solenoid up. 
and when it's installed it shouldn't rotate at all. And lastly is the clip. So now we're ready to reassemble the valve body. On each valve body I'm just going to pick up on a threaded portion and I'm going to screw the pin in. So now I've got my pins installed on the valve body. I'm going to go ahead and install my first valve body gasket. I'm just going to line it up with the pins and gently slide it over so that it drops down. Okay. Next I'm going to install my separator plate. Now I've already gone ahead and installed the new filters for the uh, TCC and the line pressure in the valve body separator plate and they need to face down into the valve bodies. Same thing, I'm going to line them up on my pins, drop my separator plate on, and then lastly I'm going to put the second gasket onto the valve body assembly. So next we have to assemble all of our check balls into our intermediate valve body assembly. Now I'm using some small amounts of grease to hold the, valve, the uh, check balls in place. This is because we have to be able to turn the valve body upside down to install it onto the pins. So you don't need to use a lot. I'm using a trans prep grease. This is specifically designed for automatic transmission assembly. It's a very low melt grease so as soon as oil pressure hits these it will wash this grease away and it won't hurt anything. You could also use petroleum jelly. Now I have a road map of where my check balls live that I'm going to follow. If you don't have access to this then hopefully you were able to take a picture of the check ball location before you did your complete disassembly. I'm using a new check ball. These come in the kit. Check balls do wear so it's important to replace them whenever you have it out and apart. And to install it I'm just taking a small amount of grease and I'm going to pick up on one of my locations just put that little bit of grease in there and then push the check ball into it. We don't need a huge amount of grease here so just enough to retain that check ball and because they are plastic they're fairly light. So now I've got all of my check balls in bar one and this one I'm going to install after I've put the intermediate valve body onto the valve body assembly and it's going to come in through this port right here. So I've just done a quick check just to make sure if I carefully rotate my valve body over that none of the balls are going to slide out and then I've brought them back in and I've done one final count. Right now I should have 11 check balls in place so I've just gone ahead and counted them all. I've got 11 and I've also double checked against the map. So I'm going to install this onto the valve body right now. So I'm just going to bring it in, carefully flip it over. And go ahead and sit that down. Now it should sit down flat. If it doesn't, it's possible that one of the check balls has moved in which case you need to be able to take this off and look. One of the other things that we want to pay attention to is our shift pole. There is a groove in this piece right here and it needs to be aligned with this groove in the valve body. Okay, next I'm going to take my last check pole and install it into the hole, make sure it drops down. This one also has a small spring which is going to be working on the back of it. So I'm going to go ahead and sit that spring onto it. Next is going to be the final gasket. So I'm going to line that up. I want to make sure too that when the gasket goes on that the spring gets all the way through and the gasket seats all the way down. You've got to be careful. Sometimes you can get it where the spring will get hung up in the gasket like that. So you want to make sure the gasket is sitting all the way down. Next is going to be the last portion of the valve body. So once again we're going to bring this in, drop it down on our guide pins. Now we want to make sure that the spring 
is located in, the, in its groove, so it sits down like that. Now, if we look at the valve body, we can see where the hardware has been before. So I'm going to take our valve body bolts, and right now I'm just going to get all of the bolts started before we proceed on and start tightening things down. And this is very important. You need to be able to make sure that all of the valve body bolts screw in smoothly and without issues, and you can't do that if you start tightening as you go. We can also go ahead and remove our guide pins. Now I've got some bolts in place. Normally I'll remove the guide pin and replace it with a bolt before I remove the next guide pin. So we've got two bolts that come in from the bottom side, but we don't want to tighten these bolts until the last two bolts are in. But on the same hand, I don't want to pick up the whole assembly and flip it over without having some load. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take my socket and I'm just going to screw my bolts down just until they are finger tight. I don't want to use any tooling or any equipment on them just yet. All I want to do is make sure all of our gaskets have a good contact with the valve body itself. So once I've got everything just nipped down finger tight, then we can go ahead and flip over the valve body. And you want to kind of have a look as you bring it up. Everything should be nice and flat and have a good contact on both sides. So everything looks good there. I'm going to go ahead, flip this over. We're going to reinstall the accumulators back onto the valve body before we tighten down all of our bolts. I've started all of the bolts and they're all just nipped down finger tight, but because the, the accumulator bolts go through the separator plate, I want to make sure we have all of our bolts in before we t tighten anything down. On the accumulators, there's some mixed information out there. On one of the manuals, they will say that all of the accumulator pistons and springs are the same. But this is not the case. On almost every transmission type is a different piston size and shape configuration with different springs. So it's important that you keep these together during your disassembly and cleaning. We're going to go ahead and change all of the O-rings. I've already changed the one set of O-rings on this piston. But if we look at these two pistons, we can see that they are very different sizes. We can see this one has a much smaller piston and this one is a much larger piston. So in the kit, we got an accumulation of different O-ring sizes. We got four base O-rings. I've already used one. And then we have a selection of different sized O-rings for the top part of the piston. So all I'm going to do is pull off my old O-ring and I'm going to sit it on top of an O-ring and match it to the closest size. And then I'm going to go ahead and install that O-ring onto our piston. And then with the base same thing, we're just going to pop it off, and we know our base sizes are all going to be the same. Same as before, we want to make sure that the O-ring isn't twisted and is on the piston nice and concentric. And you can see I'm just doing one piston at a time so I don't get anything mixed up. And then one O-ring at a time. Once we've got all of our O-rings changed out, we're going to use some transmission fluid again. And on these ones, because I, I don't want to dip it and make a huge mess, I'm just going to coat the O-ring with my fingers. And the transmission fluid I'm using is the same fluid that it's going to run with. We've already washed all of our housings, but we want to have a look inside, make sure there's no scoring or no issues. And then I'm going to lubricate the housing 
on both bores at the same time. And then go ahead and install my pistons. The piston should slide in and go all the way back and seat fairly easily. And you can see I'm just doing one at a time as well so I don't mix up any locations or pistons. Okay, now I've got everything installed, all the pistons are installed into the housing. I'm going to go ahead and take my springs and the order and color of the springs may be different in your transmission. It's going to depend on the calibration that it was built with. So I've got all of my springs sitting in the order that they came out. And next I'm going to take my accumulators and do the same thing. You want to make sure that the oil feed pipe lines up with the oil feed hole on the valve body. And I'm just going to go ahead and sit that over slide it down. Now depending on the calibration package there may be under some spring pressure here but we just want to get all of the uh, the bolts started first. We'll come back and tighten them later. So now I've got all of my fasteners back into my valve body. I'm going to go ahead and torque all of my valve body screws and my accumulator screws. Not, don't forget the two underneath the valve body. These are going to be torqued to 11 newton meters. I've also reinstalled my guide pins just to make sure that everything is uh, nice and concentric with the holes. So when I tighten it up, I can make sure I can still get the mounting bolts in. So I'm just going to start from the center and work my way out, no specific pattern, just best practices. Okay, pull my guide pins. And I'm just going to roll it over and do my two valve body bolts on the bottom before I tighten my accumulators. Now everything's tightened down, the valve body's ready to reinstall back into the car. So before we put the valve body up, I've done a couple of things. Um, one, I have installed two of our guide pins, just to make it easier when I'm guiding the valve body up, so I don't have to try and align it while I'm pushing it up. The next thing is we need to install our valve body to transmission case gaskets. And there's two of these gaskets. The first one is going to sit right here, and it's a four slot with rubber O-rings on it. And the next one is a two slot that's going to install right here. Now, because we're underneath the car, I'm going to use a little bit of our trans prep grease just to make sure that they stay up in their holes and don't fall out when we're trying to install the uh, valve body. So I'm just going to press that up till it seats all the way. And the same with the back one. Okay. So I just had to move this pin. Originally I had it in a screw hole right here. 
and this bolt hole is not used on the valve body so when I went to come up it wouldn't align with anything. When I lift the valve body up we want to make sure that this pin here engages the park shifter or the um, park valve shifter. So I'm going to bring it up, locate on my first pin, locate on my second pin, and then just make sure everything comes up nice and smooth. I'm selected here, so there we go. We just got to make sure that that pin goes in the groove and we're just going to get a couple of bolts in to get it started and hold it up. So now I've got all the valve body bolts just snug down. I haven't talked them yet. I'm going to go ahead and put our uh, gear selector spring on. I want to make sure that I'm engaging the neutral safety switch and the selector port. And go ahead and get just both of the bolts started for right now. Next I'm just going to go ahead and torque all of our mounting bolts down. So these are 11 newton meters as well. It's going to work my way out from the center out. And then lastly I'm going to tighten down our two selector spring bolts. Okay, now I'm going to plug in all of our connectors again. Most of these will lay pretty much where they live because that's where they've been laying for some length of time. So I just want to make sure they're all seated. Now, if you had any of these connectors that broke the retaining clip when they came apart, there's two ways to deal with it. You could, actually three ways, you could replace the entire harness, which would get all new clips, or you could see if you could get the actual plug from AC Delco and replace it that way. Or the other way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small zip tie, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the plug, bring it through the two wires here and zip tie it up. That'll make sure that the plug doesn't vibrate out in service. So next I'm going to install the filter. I've already gone ahead and lubricated the seals with ATF. You've also got to make sure that you put your finger up inside the pump area and make sure that there is no other seals from the old filter stuck up in there. Then I'm just going to go ahead and push that up until it's all the way home. So the next step I'm going to go ahead and put my pan on. I've got a new pan gasket already installed onto the pan and I'm just going to go ahead hold that up get probably three or four started and then that way it'll support the pan and I can come around and install all the rest. I'm going to go ahead and install all of the pan bolts first before I start tightening. So I've got all the bolts run down, now I'm just going to run around and torque them. These are going to torque to 11 newton meters as well. So the fill plug for these transmissions is located up on the side of the transmission. And it's a bolt just like this with an o-ring. I've just put a new o-ring onto here. The way that we're going to fill it is we're going to use a pump pack. We're filling it with Dextron 6 ATF, which is a synthetic uh, ATF fluid. And 
at first what I'm going to do is just fill it till it starts to come out. Then I need to start the engine, let it idle and warm up a little and then we'll top it off just like we would with any other automatic transmission. So we've just got some fluid starting to drip out now so I'm going to loosely screw the plug back in and start the engine. Time for a test drive. <laughs> 